for today's demo session and special thanks to Pavan for joining us. Um, Pavan Kanteti is from Polkadex and today he will be making a demo presentation on the topic, non-custodial peer-to-peer order book exchange. Um, so Pavan is a product and operations manager at Polkadex. He bridges technology, marketing, business, and user experience at Polkadex to create um, a cutting edge, non custodial order book exchange and other dApps. Pavan has a master's degree in information technology and management from the University of Texas at Dallas. Um, thank you so much once more for joining us. And um, please go ahead. You have the floor, Pavan. Thank you so much. Uh, it's great to be here. Um, yeah, I am sorry I did not get your name. Uh, please uh, excuse me for that. Uh, what is your name again? Oh, my name is Agama. Agama. Okay. Hi, Agama. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for the nice introduction, Agama. Uh, yeah, as uh, as you mentioned, I'm uh, you know working with Pol Polkadex as a uh, product and operations manager. I do a little bit of uh, almost everything at Polkadex, you know, uh, talking to technology, business, market, marketing, um, and and uh, try and bridge the gap between all the teams. Um, so uh, going into the presentation, what we are doing at Polkadex is uh, uh, we're trying to build a non-custodial exchange, but at the same time, it's it's an order book based exchange, right? Uh, non custodial exchanges, as uh, you have uh, seen, like Uniswap and Sushi Swap. Um, these are exchanges uh, that that kind of eliminate some of the shortcomings of uh, centralized exchanges, uh, but at the same time, uh, you know they have uh, their own uh, shortcomings as well uh, when it comes to high frequency trading. Uh, when it comes to front running, you know, price slippage, so on and so forth. So what we are trying to build at Polkadex is um, a sweet solution that falls somewhere uh, between the centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges. We're taking uh, the best of both worlds and building this sweet product uh, wherein users don't have to let go of the control of their funds um, or their assets. Um, and at the same time, participate in high frequency trading uh, like anyone would on a centralized exchange. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it, it really brings the best of both worlds. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, share my screen and show you guys uh, the look and feel of the product. We're right now, we're on the beta phase. Um, we're live, we're on the beta phase. Um, and uh, you know we have started trading with one pair but the idea is uh, um, make it more and more stable within the next few months and list uh, as many uh, tokens uh, token pairs as possible uh, starting off with the polkadot ecosystem um, so so yeah i'll uh, go ahead and share my screen and uh, demo you guys the, the product Are you able to see my screen? Screen's up. Sorry, Agama, are you able to see my screen? Yes. All right, all right. All right. Um, so I'm assuming that everyone uh, here uh, has some understanding of how the centralized and decentralized exchanges work. Um, if if not, I'll just you know give a brief uh, brief introduction to both the worlds. So basically, centralized exchanges are uh, centralized exchanges in the uh, crypto industry are a replica of uh, uh, you know stock market exchanges in the traditional finance system, right? Uh, you have buy trades and you have sell trades, people wanting to buy a certain uh, token and people wanting to sell a certain to uh, the same token 
and then you know they they input the price at which they want to buy the other person puts the price at which they want to uh, sell and when the trade matches uh, you know the the assets are transferred and for doing this the exchange uh, charges a certain amount of fee right um, that's how the centralized exchanges work and the biggest caveat of centralized exchanges is um, we send our funds to them thereby we are trusting the centralized exchanges uh, to hold our funds and not uh, not run away with them um, but recently you have seen uh, the ftx fiasco what has happened there um, so, you know, I don't need to give uh, uh, any caution messages there. What we, we, I mean, the world has a big example now uh, to see uh, the, the dangers of centralized exchanges. Uh, when it comes to decentralized exchanges, the users are not transferring their tokens to the exchange, but what they're doing is they're signing an intent for the exchange to read the user's wallet balance and tell the uh, tell the system that yes this user has a certain amount of tokens and it does the same with the other person's uh, the other party's uh, wallet as well and when the trade matches uh, you know the tokens are transferred between the parties uh, they're not transferring them to the exchange uh, so that's that's the simple difference between centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges now let me go ahead and show you guys our exchange. So this is how Polkadex order book looks like. Um, so just like any other exchange to uh, start trading, you need to set up an account. Um, all you have to do is go to orderbook.polkadex.trade and uh, click on sign up. It'll ask you for some basic details and then you in input those details and then you can sign up. Let me input my details. All right, that takes you to the exchange page. So um, as you can see here, uh, there's active uh, trading happening. There are open trades. Uh, so the order book is where you see all the buy orders and the sell orders. These are all people wanting to sell uh, USDT tokens. Um, uh, sorry, uh, these are all uh, orders or users wanting to sell PDEX. Their PDEX, PDEX is uh, Polkadex's uh, native token and purchase USDT in exchange for it. And these are all orders wherein the users want to purchase PDEX uh, by giving away their USDT, right? So these are the buy and sell, uh, sell orders. So to trade on Polkadex exchange, um, you can, you basically need to follow four simple steps. First is you set up an account, next, you connect your crypto wallet and deposit some funds to your account, which is uh, by deposit, I, uh, you know, uh, it's not that you are sending your tokens uh, to uh, to the exchange. It's it only means that the the wallet uh, the exchange is reading your wallet, making sure that you have enough balance and is creating a shadow token on the exchange. So that you know you can um, it can do the uh, trade matching and then when the matching happens it can just uh, release those shadow tokens whenever you want to withdraw. So you're not actually transferring your tokens to the exchange. You're only minting shadow tokens when 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 I say deposit and uh, withdraw. Okay. So that's the uh, so the first step again is uh, create an account, transfer or mint some shadow tokens to the account uh, by signing. Uh, a secure message. Uh, the third is, uh, you know, place a buy or sell trade. Once you, once the trade gets executed successfully, you can withdraw the funds back to your account. So um, this is uh, this is for funds that are there on the Polkadex network. Now let's say you want to, uh, you have your USDT on some other network like Ethereum. 
what you can do in that case is you can use our token manager tool and uh, all you have to do here is uh, bring your tokens from a secondary exchange like ethereum to polkadex so that you can uh, thereby uh, deposit those tokens to the order book or mint those shadow tokens to the order book and uh, trade with them so the first step uh, in bridging these tokens from a from a different network to polkadex network is uh, you connect your uh, you connect your wallet for the for the other network in this case i'm uh, transferring some tokens from ethereum to polkadex so i go here i click on my metamask and i uh, connect my metamask wallet here and uh, it automatically chose my polkadex wallet as well but i can again show you how to choose my, your polkadex wallet um, for this i mean uh, the the uh, condition for this is you need to have your polkadot js extension and metamask extension installed on your browser um, so when I click connect, it automatically reads the account that is selected in the extension and uh, pops up those accounts. So here I set up a demo account um, for Polkadex wallet, and I'm choosing one of my uh, MetaMask accounts, which has uh, some some balance, some USDT balance. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to send. 0.25 USDT from Ethereum chain to Polkadex chain. I think I've already started a transaction a while ago, so it's, it's resume previous transaction. But yeah, what you do here is you're signing a message and you um, accept the whatever uh, gas fee there is and you click confirm. So if you see that um, on the Polkadex network, I have like 1.46 CUSDT. Uh, once this transaction goes through, that balance will have increased by 0.25 USDT. This usually takes about a couple of minutes based on the network traffic. Uh, okay, let's see. Let's a second here. I agree for the gas fee. It'll take about a couple of minutes. Um, and you can see the progress on either scan if you if you want. But yeah, as that is happening, um, you know, let me go ahead and uh, uh, show you the next step. Uh, this, this will take a couple of minutes usually. Um, but I have already deposited some tokens to my account. So I'm going to demo the order book using those tokens. So now uh, what we have done is, uh, so what we're trying to do basically is we're trying to um, swap or exchange or trade usdt for pdex right that's what we're trying to do and my usdt is on my Ethereum is on ethereum network uh, as you can see this is completed so uh yeah this uh i can check my balance here it, it has increased uh as you can see 1.7182 uh, usdt um, so yeah uh, what it's trying to say is my usdt is on ethereum network and I, my, the order book is run on Polkadex network, right? It's, it's uh, supported by the uh, Polkadex blockchain. The order book is 
uh, supported by the Polkadex blockchain. So now for me to trade on Polkadex exchange, I need my funds on the Polkadex network. So what I tried, what I'm trying to do here, or what I just did here is I transferred uh, one of my USDT that is there on Ethereum network using this chain bridge, uh, which is a centralized bridge solution, but we are moving to a decentralized solution, um, an in-house decentralized solution within the next couple of months. Um, so using that bridge, what we're trying to do is we're trying to send the tokens that are there on the Ethereum chain to the Polkadex network, the Polkadex chain. Once the assets are on the Polkadex chain, the order book can read the assets on the Polkadex chain and thereby, you know, the user can give consent to the order book that yes, uh, I would like to trade with my tokens, um, you know, but don't take them away from my blockchain account. Uh, just mint shadow tokens on the order book. Uh, read my balance, mint shadow tokens on the order book do the trading and then when I want to deposit or when I want to withdraw, just, you know, uh, release the new amount onto my network. So that that's that's the flow that is happening here. So as a part of that, we've transferred one USDT from uh, Ethereum network to Polkadex network. Now, uh, let me go to the exchange. And the first step uh, to use the exchange is you need to connect your trading account. For you to connect your trading account, you first need to set up a trading account. I have already set up some trading accounts, which I'm going to use to uh, for the purpose of this demo. But um, you know, uh, to create a new trading account, all you have to do is click here and to uh, select the funding account or the main blockchain account that you want to use uh, for trading and uh, you know give it a name and create that account and uh, you know it shows registered and then uh, it is connected to a trading account and you can use this trading account to perform your trades so now since i have my order book uh, ob demo account uh, that's the only account that i have on the chain i'm going to use this trading account that's linked to that and i'm going to add some funds to that account so um i already have some funds here but let's say i want to add i want to deposit more usdt this automatically reads my balance that is there on the polkadex chain uh, which is 1.7182 i'm gonna add let's say 0 0.1 i'm gonna that's the amount that i'm gonna deposit by deposit, I mean I'm creating a shadow token inside the order book. Again, this usually takes um, under a minute for the block finalization to happen. And you can see it all on the on the blockchain, you know, for CEX deposit successful. It's a deposit successful. So now I have uh, deposited the or I have minted a shadow token inside the order book, um, thereby locking that. Uh, shadow token on my um, uh, they were locking the actual token on my exchange now what i'm going to do is uh, so let's say i have some um, usdt balance and i have some pdx balance i'm going to go to the exchange and i'm going to place a trade so let's say i want to buy some pdx right so i'll look for the best selling price and click here that automatically populates the price here and then let's say i want to sell 0.2 or 0.1 pdx at that price so this is the total amount of um uh cusdt that i'll be spending uh, to purchase the pdx so i click buy pdx it seamlessly gets matched because there are already open orders here. It seamlessly gets matched. Um, you can see my order history. 
you know, the, at that price, at this price, I have just placed an order and it got filled. Um, and my funds would have uh, increased by that much amount. So yeah, it's as simple as that. Unlike you see in Uniswap or SushiSwap or AMM based uh, decentralized exchanges, um, Polkadex has you know sub zero latency and uh, you know about five hundred thousand trades per second uh, speed, high frequency trading. Um, I can show you guys one more market order as well. Um, let's say now I want to sell some PDEX at the best market price. Um, let's say I want to sell it at this price uh, for an amount of 0.1 PDEX. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it again got matched seamlessly. I've sold the PDEX at the best market price. It got filled and uh, my PDEX amount decreased and USDT amount increased. So it's as simple as that, just like any other, um, you know, centralized exchange, um, you can trade. And at the same time, it's a decentralized exchange. Um, so that's the beauty of this. Uh, that's the beauty of uh, Polkadex order book. Um, I, I want to pause there for a bit because I somehow feel that I assumed everyone here already have traded on a lot of exchanges and, uh, you know, I've directly jumped into, uh, uh, jumped into showcasing the product. I just would like to pause there for a bit and, um, ask if anyone has any questions or if, they, if, if anyone needs more clarity about anything, um, I'd be happy to answer those questions. Thank you, Pavan. I'll just look in the chat to see if there are any questions here. Is there anyone that needs to get some clarification regarding what Pavan has said so far? Um, a question here says, how does a Polkadot wallet differ from a Polkadex wallet? That's a very good question. It's uh, Polkadex wallet is the same as Polkadot wallet. Uh, I mean, Polkadex is built on Substrate. Substrate is the framework uh, that Polkadot released. So Polkadex is built on Substrate. So if you see that on my Polkadot uh, exchange uh, extension, I I have all my uh, uh, Polkadex accounts as well. So. Uh, you know, you can use Polkadot.js Explorer uh, and, you know, basically connect to Polkadex network as well. If you see um, under parachains, uh, under Polkadot parachains, uh, we would have been listed as one of the parachains. So Polkadot.js gives you access to Polkadex and a lot of other parachains within the ecosystem and all the all the blockchains that have built on substrate. So uh, I would say there's literally no difference. It's the same wallet. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there's a question here. What are the three benefits of using Polkadex compared to Uniswap? The first thing is Uniswap works on uh, uh, an AMM based model. What an AMM based model is, is automated market maker. Um, so for centralized exchanges, what happens is uh, we're all sending tokens to the exchange and the exchange is doing the uh, you know, trading and everything that is all fine. But what happens with centralized exchanges is centralized exchanges have liquidity providers, right? Someone, uh, some big uh, firm, investment firm or a market making firm is providing liquidity to the uh, centralized exchanges for pairs and they're charging you a fee for that that's the reason there's you know trading fee on all the centralized exchanges when you go to decentralized exchanges decentralized exchanges eliminate this concept of uh, you know one liquidity uh, provider coming in and providing majority of the liquidity market makers coming in providing majority of the liquidity what they do is uh, what they depend on is automated market making uh, system. What this system does is, <clears throat> excuse me, what, what this system does is anyone can go 
and contribute their tokens to a liquidity pool, right? Um, you as a user can go and contribute your tokens to a liquidity pool. Let's say there is FedEx and USDT a pair uh, wherein uh, people want to trade. You can go and provide liquidity to a liquidity pool, which is guarded by a mathematical formula. That is uh, the amount of uh, PDEX multiplied by the amount of uh, USDT will always remain a constant, right? If, if someone is coming and trying to trade, someone is coming and trying to buy, uh, buy at the market price, it's all well and good. Uh, but someone is, uh, you know, um, uh, quoting a higher price or a lower price, the algorithm automatically adjusts the price of the other token, right? So thereby, uh, uh, the the uh, price is maintained always at the market level, and of course there are arbitraging options as well. So this is how uh, centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges differ in the way they handle market making or they handle liquidity, right? Um, so when it comes to uh, an exchange like Uniswap, what you're doing is you are placing one single trade and then um, you are uh, trading against the liquidity uh, pool. Um, I mean, you're buying into the liquidity pool by uh, at whatever the price of the pool is. Um, and all this is happening uh, sequentially, right? So let's say uh, Uniswap is built on Ethereum, right? And uh, uh, for a thousand users to trade at a time, it's going to be a nightmare or a million users to trade at a time, it's going to be a nightmare with one single uh, uh, pool because when more users are trying to interact with the system, what happens in case of uh, Ethereum is the gas fee is increased substantially, right? Um, in the case of, uh, and at the same time, um, it's it's not as intuitive as an order book exchange. Order book is you can see the buy trades and the sell trades at the same time. Um, uh, you can look at the order book and see what are all the uh, price levels that 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 the tokens are trading at. You know, uh, you can just go place a market trade or a limit order, um, and you can execute that trade with uh, sub zero latency in case of Polkadex. So that's one major advantage is high frequency trading. Uh, second advantage is we literally charge zero trading fee. There's no trading fee at all. Um, that's the second advantage. And then the third advantage is uh, uh, the gas fee. You don't have to, you know, just to trade 100 USDT, you don't have to pay another 100 USDT in gas fee, right? That's that's one of the major advantages of of uh, uh, Polkadex order book. I hope I'm able to um, I'll be able to answer your question. Thank you, thank you, Pavan. Um, so someone asked that you initially made a transfer of a coin um, mm -hmm. during your demo, and mm -hmm. they want to know where is it from. And so where was it sent before placing mm -hmm. at the exchange? Okay, that's a good question. So let me tell you, uh, yeah, uh, let me take a step back here and explain to you how um, Polkadex order book is built. Um, the way Polkadex order book works, you know, um, for us to be able to enable high frequency trading, you know, uh, unlike sushi, Uniswap or SushiSwap, uh, when you're interacting with the blockchain, high frequency trading is not possible, right? Because uh, blockchains are the nodes that are run on servers uh, across the globe. Um, it's, it's not, I mean, there's always going to be that barrier of latency, right? So you cannot perform high frequency trading on uh, when you're directly interacting with the blockchain and trading uh, when the block, uh, uh, um, like in SushiSwap and Uniswap that we have seen. So what we have done is, okay, for us to enable high frequency trading, 
let us separate the two things uh, you know let us separate the funds and the trading uh, the order matching part so what we have done is we have put the order matching part inside a secure enclave that is built by intel uh, which nobody has access to on this planet and uh, so intel chips on uh, have have this uh, uh, components called security and uh, secure enclaves uh anything that happens within it is cryptographically uh written and nobody can tamper anything that is done inside it so what we have done is we've put the order matching part inside the secure enclave and then uh the sec- whenever a user wants to trade what happens is uh, in fact let me show you a diagram that be much more easier to explain um okay so um so let's say a user comes in and they want to create an order a buy order or a sell order what it what the system does is uh, they they initially connect to their wallet that's that's the first part uh, with any of the um uh, yeah, you know uh, uh, blockchain projects uh, when the user connect uh, the wallet and they create a buy order or a sell order what it does is uh, the the order is initially sent to this trusted execution environment which is the secure enclave that i'm talking about and what this does is this verifies that the user has enough balance in their polkadex account and then creates or replicates when when i when you click on deposit what it is doing is replicating the the amount of tokens that you want to trade with inside the enclave and uh, you know they thereby uh, matching the trades with a high frequency and then whenever only when you want to withdraw the tokens is when the system uh, the, the order book is interacting with the blockchain so this way it is enabling us to do high frequency trading um so that that's the core concept on which the uh, on which polkadex is built on now to come back and answer your question uh, at the beginning of the demo what i have done is so see ethereum is a different network and polkadex is a different network and d apps decentralized exchanges or any d app are built on one network right so uh, now let's say uh, within that network if i don't have access to some other tokens the whole purpose of uh, interoperability is lost right so you need to bridge the tokens from some other network let's say i want to uh, trade usdt for bitcoin um uh, and my the exchange that i'm trading on is built on top of let's say uh an xyz blockchain so now i have to bring both these tokens to that uh blockchain and then do the trade so that is exactly what i've done at the beginning of the uh, uh demo what i've done is i've transferred a usdt uh token from ethereum network to polkadex network now since the order book is built on top of the polkadex network the order book can access both the tokens both uh, uh, the order book can access the usdt tokens now i want to let's say trade these usdt tokens for uh, bitcoin um i'll need bitcoin uh, so what i'll what i'll do is uh, i have i have gotten usdt from ethereum to to polkadex network now i'll go and check uh, a market you know this is the pdx slash usdt market that you are seeing here but what i'll check for is a btc slash usdt market and there i'll sell my usdt and get btc uh, to the polkadex network right now the uh, the bitcoin that i have gotten is in my polkadex account now if you want to transfer this to some other network i'll again use the bridge 
and transfer those tokens out of the Polkadex network to that uh, uh, secondary network, wherever I want to transfer to. That is that is what I have done at the beginning of the um, demo. I got a USDT from Ethereum to Polkadex and traded it for PDEX. Now I can, if I want to withdraw, I'll withdraw it uh, using again the same token manager. I'll be again using the same which I'll withdraw it from Polkadex chain to Ethereum chain. I hope I answered your question. Thank you. Um, so to so the next question before we allow you move on with your presentation, um, mm -hmm. what's the transaction processing speed of Polkadot? Uh, transaction processing speed of Polkadot. Yeah. Uh, I, I just want to uh, get more clarification there. Uh, what exactly do you mean by uh, transaction? Do you mean uh, the transaction of the trades, the trade execution speed? Is that what you mean? Or, uh, you know, when I'm yeah. uh, depositing or withdrawing. The trade execution speed, is that what they mean? Um, Vikas, maybe you can, okay, execution speed in TPS. Transactions yes, per it's, it's, per it's, it, Yeah, yeah, transactions per second. It's uh, right now, uh, it's at 500,000 transactions per second, trades per second, yeah. Okay. We Thank call you. it trades per second, not transactions per second, because again, we have to understand the difference here that uh, the transactions are not directly happening with the blockchain. Instead, the trades are ex getting executed at a high frequency within the enclave. And only when the user wants to withdraw, that is when the transaction uh, uh, is happening with the blockchain. Okay. Thank so, you. Yeah. If uh, are there any other questions? Yes, um, quite a couple of questions. And mm -hmm. if you'd like to move on with your presentation, I think it's great. We can come back to the questions afterwards. Sure, sure, sure. So as you all have seen, the first step that I've done is I've created an account. Uh, I go to the accounts tab here and you'll see that there are two types of accounts here trading account and funding account funding account is your main blockchain account this has all your funds um, you should never share the keys of your funding account with anyone because you know it's it's uh, it's all your money um, so you should uh, so funding account is where all your funds are located on the blockchain when you create a new account here what you're doing is you are linking that funding account and creating a trading account. This is this is the trading account which is used to place uh, trades within the order book. So once you create the trading account and add funds to it, by add funds, like I mentioned multiple times, uh, it, you know, creating those uh, shadow funds within the order book, um, so that the order book can perform its high frequency trading. Um, you you're uh, you're adding those funds there and then you're going to the exchange tab and you're placing your orders. Um, now, when once all your trading activity is done, uh, let's say you want to withdraw your tokens to back to your blockchain account, back to your blockchain account. You go to the balances tab and, um, you know, I have 0 0.381 PDEX. I want to withdraw, let's say 0 0.1 PDEX out of it. Um, so it automatically populates your balance. You can you know, input how much ever you want to withdraw and you can click withdraw. Once a with, when it says withdraw successful, that means it has successfully placed a withdraw request. What it will do now is um, every, uh, every 12 seconds and, and once every block, all the withdrawal requests within the order book are are uh, put together and you know processed in one single uh, transaction so it will usually ask you to claim whatever you have withdrawn this is uh, to make sure that we are not pushing the tokens out instead it's a pull model wherein users are requesting the tokens to be withdrawn the reason for doing this is again uh, reduce the load on the order book thereby you know no uh, uh, transaction fee there right 
uh, it'll usually take about one under one minute um, for it to appear here and once once it once the tokens are ready to claim you can uh, claim the tokens uh, you can check the we can check the blockchain to you know just see how the how, how it is going um yeah I, I see that it's ready to claim whatever i wanted to withdraw is now ready to claim i can go here and claim the tokens and uh, what this will do is yeah what this will do is so when initially uh, when we minted shadow tokens on the on the uh, inside the enclave inside the order book it will withhold the tokens uh, in your account um that that those money uh, amount of tokens uh, in your account now when you want to withdraw it will update your new balances based on your trading activity let's say you you made a huge uh, trade and uh, you know you've uh, exchanged your usdt for a lot of pdx um, now you can request uh, or you can your uh, new balance will be updated your in your account thereby uh, the balance will be freed inside the or uh, uh, cleared inside the enclave or inside the order book and then it will be released on the on your uh, polkadex blockchain account on your funding account so that's the that's the final step so what you have done is you have come to the exchange you have created an account you have linked your funding account, your blockchain account, and created a shadow token account for trading. And then you have placed trades using that account. And then once the trading activity is finished, you have withdrawn the new funds or whatever amount of funds you wanted back to your blockchain account from the trading activity. So that's the four step process. Um, another thing here is users can also deploy their own trading bots um and you know make profits uh, with the advantages provided by trading bots you know they they constantly monitor the markets and for example some of these orders that you're seeing here are placed by um placed by trading bots from uh, from one of the market makers uh, called coin alpha um uh, they they have a solution called hummingbot uh, trading bots uh, those bots are, are running in the background. So what they'll do is every time they see a price fluctuation in an external market, they'll adjust those uh, trades here. And based on the user trading activity or based on the price activity, you know they they you can uh, set up a trading strategy, and the bots will do the trading for you, and you know uh, thereby generate profits for you. Uh, another thing I have to mention here is uh, at the moment the graph is not fully visible because uh, you know at this moment there are not a lot of trades happening. Or very these two are the trades that I have placed a while ago, so that's the reason you know it's, it's although the graph is there, it's it's very uh, if you can see uh, yeah this way I can see it, but um, candlesticks are, are uh, very small in size at the moment uh, because of the low trading activity um again like i mentioned we only have one trading pair at the moment the product is in beta phase i would say encourage you all to uh, go ahead and trade uh, on the platform with small amounts and uh, see for yourself how we have built a non-custodial exchange uh, that has high frequency trading um, and that has uh, trading bot enabling um that have that has an ability uh, to to enable trading bots and make profits for the users um and that looks and feels just like a centralized exchange but the users are never letting go of the control of their funds um, so so yeah that's uh, that's that's all i have for today i hope uh, you know i was able to um showcase the showcase uh, a good product for you all and and you're all uh, excited about it great thank you so we'll go back to the questions in the chat room mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So can you trade tokens on this DEX and receive royalties in perpetuity of the coins that, had, that are traded? Is that possible? Sorry, Sorry say that again. I, I did not follow the okay. question, sorry. Can a user trade tokens on this DEX and receive royalties in perpetuity of the coins that are traded? Not at the moment, uh, but that is something that we might uh, consider in the future. Yeah, not okay. at the moment. Uh, yeah, right now the focus is uh, just to provide the best user experience possible and high frequency trading and non-custodial trading. And, you know, uh, just iron out any details that are there uh, in, in that domain first and then move on to adding uh, more features. Yeah. Okay. Um, so someone needed clarity on um, Polkadex offering lower fees compared to Uniswap. I think you have mentioned that um, before. Yes, yes. Uh, we, we, we have zero trading fee. That's not our business model. We are not making any money uh, based on uh, trading fee. That's not our business model. Yeah. So um, it will be um, free forever. Yeah. Okay. Um, so is Polkadex truly decentralized? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, Polkadex is see, decentralized, uh, centralized and decentralized. I would say uh, these are very um, uh, debatable terms. When you say decentralized, if you mean that the the exchange or the party that is or the entity that is doing the trading is not having any control of user funds yes we are truly decentralized uh, but if you are re, uh, getting into much more technical terms i would need uh, you know more clarity on what what exactly um, you would want me to answer but yeah if if uh, decentralization we believe that decentralization is about uh, not not touching uh, user funds and having the user the, the user should have access I mean the control over their funds all the time uh, so so yes in that sense we're truly decentralized okay um, someone is curious to know if um, Polkadex uses proof of work or proof of stake proof of stake uh, because we are built on substrate Polkadot um, uh, is uh, by nature uh, proof of stake. So uh, for, yeah, Polkadex is uh, proof of stake. And uh, yeah, you can, if, if you can buy some tokens and you can nominate validators, um, you know, you can run your own nodes. A lot of community members run their own nodes. In fact, our community is our biggest support, have, have been our biggest supporters. Um, they've been running nodes uh, for a very long time now. and uh, yeah, proof of stake, I think, is the future. Uh, proof of work, as we all know, requires uh, horrendous amounts of energy consumption. And uh, that's not viable in the future. And yeah, proof of stake is, is the way to go. That's what we believed. And that's the reason we chose uh, Polkadot. And um, if uh, being very happy about that decision. Hello. Okay, thank you. So the last question here is from Isipa, who wants to know if Polkadot offers ambassadorship rules. Polkadex or Polkadot? Polkadot here. Polkadot. Uh, Polkadot um, offers what? Ambassadorship rule. Like, do they call for ambassadors? for the project? Uh -huh. See, Polkadot, Polkadot has, yes, ambassador programs I'm aware of. And even we, Polkadex, uh, have ambassador programs. Uh, we have, uh, you, you can follow our uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, or any of the social media channels, our Telegram channel, and uh, the ambassador forms are there. You can sign up to be an ambassador and uh, based on the kind of, uh, uh, work the ambassadors do, they're rewarded with 
uh, a point scheme and those points are redeemable um, to tokens based on the treasury uh, approval so yeah i would i will highly encourage uh, anyone who is interested in being a polkadex ambassador to look through the program okay thank you um so while you were speaking someone just dropped a question and they want to know if you can point us to any site um to try out crypto transactions with dummy tokens with dummy tokens okay let me open it uh, for you right away so our token manager is called tokenmanager.polkadex.trade but there is a uh, testnet version of this this is only for testing you can just go to token manager uh, bait beta.polkadex.trade that will take you to the testnet version of the same uh, same uh, um, interface let me drop it in the messages uh, message window here and at the same time for you to test the order book uh, it's the same thing again order book beta dot polkadex dot trade and uh, you can use this to try the order book you so uh, first, you need to get some test tokens uh, to your account uh, using the token manager, and then you can sign up for an account on the order book and uh, trade using those test tokens on the order book. Yeah. So as you can see, this is the testnet version of the same um, live version that I've showed you a while ago. You're on mute, uh, Raman. <laughs> thank you. Um, so thank you very much for the recommendations for the links. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. So I think this will be our last question, um, everyone. Mm -hmm. Is Polkadex compatible with Lemonade Wallet? Uh, which um, wallet is it again? Lemonade. Are you familiar with Lemonade or social? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not, not, not at the moment. Not at the moment. See, right now, the only wallets that we are compatible with are for um, for the Polkadot ecosystem. We are compatible with the Polkadot JS extension, and we are compatible with MetaMask uh, for the Ethereum uh, network. Um, so, at the moment, these are the only two uh, wallets that we are compatible with. But we are actively working on adding more and more wallets. We're working with wallets like Nova Wallet, Dallas Moon Wallet, and so on and so forth uh, to integrate with us. Um, so until now, uh, the last three years, we have, we have spent in research and development, and we finally have the product ready. Now is the uh, scaling time. Um, you know, we, we are in touch with a lot of parachain projects, so we'll soon be listing uh, 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 a lot of parachain uh, project pairs on the order book exchange and then we'll be listing uh, once we once we introduce connectors uh, with other uh, networks we'll be listing um, you know pro uh, tokens like ethereum bitcoin and so on and so forth in the future so yeah okay thank you all right Thank you, everyone. Um, Chuku, uh, Pavan has said that the link that you could check uh, on their Twitter and also on their sites for um, information regarding the ambassadorial sign up, right? Say that again. Um, the link for interested students yeah. to sign up to be Polkadex ambassadors. Is yeah, it I can. I, I can, it should be on our social media pages. I need to check with my marketing team. Uh, okay. But uh, Polka Deck Ambassador Program. Yeah, I, I can quickly find it and uh, uh, send it as well. If, if, um, yeah, I need Polka Deck. Yeah, so you can use this link here and uh, uh, let me paste it in the chat window. Yeah, you can use this link and uh, go through all the steps required to be an ambassador. All right. So thank you so much, everyone, for this engaging session. And 
A special thanks goes to Pavan Kanteti for this very insightful and um, educative session. Um, thank you for sharing your wealth of knowledge with us here at Unit Masters, and hopefully we we'll get to have you in subsequent cohorts. Um, so with this, we have come to the end of today's demo session. And um, I'd like to say everyone enjoy yeah. the weekend and uh, see you next week. Bye-bye. Yes. Thank you so much, guys. It's been a pleasure talking to you all and answering those questions. Um, I hope I was uh, better prepared with the presentation. Uh, you know, I did not know the style and setting of the uh, of the program, but I'd love to, uh, you know, be here for a further session whenever possible. And uh, you know, if I can, um, if 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 uh, you guys can provide with uh, with a kind of, you know topics, wide range of topics that you want me to cover. Uh, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, but it's it's been a pleasure talking today. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, thank you so much for hosting this, uh, Arama. Um, thank, you, thank you, Prof. Thank you again. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.